cloud operating system. Okay, sorry, introduction. We're here with Matt Droder, Droder and Marchin here for Open Source Ecology. We're talking about the autonomous tractor and how to go about that. So, so Matt does did some work with ROS, the robotic operating system. We're strategizing on how to implement that for the tractor. So let's do it. What is currently, like, what, what would you say, Matt, would be uh, currently um, the best way to go about it, like using the technology that maybe that you're familiar with? That is there some, some things about ROS that you're familiar with that you can um, implement, how, that, that you would see that implementable within the tractor? I think so. There's some other people that are driving around using ROS, so we could follow some of the, the process that they've used and some of the electronics. Ah, oh, so you know some people that are doing ROS tractors? Yep. Oh, really? Full-size tractors. Oh, nice, nice. That's that's great because if we have case examples, that would make it easy for us. Yeah. Huh. Are you in contact with these people? Um, not yet, but one of the things is to go out and visit them when I come out for here at the end of the month. Uh, where are they located? Um, Illinois. Illinois. Interesting. There's, there's another one up in uh, Saskatchewan. I see. Huh. Okay. I haven't heard about any of this, so this is this is good news. Um, are you able to reach out? To, have you reached out to them yet, or were you planning to do that? Um, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. Not yet. Um, still trying to find some people that are interested. I think we've got um, another Ross developer that is interested in coming, and he also knows computer vision, so that will be helpful. Oh, wow. Are you saying a person who's interested in coming to the actual workshop? Yeah, to the actual workshop. Very and nice. hopefully during the week we can get some help from the community online. Oh, very nice, very nice. That's cool. Um, so, yeah, where do we start here? So. Uh, can you summarize the the process by which they're implementing it? What what does their implementation look like? I'm not exactly sure with the tractors, but with your platform, it just depends on the hydraulic controllers that we pick or use. Mm -hmm. We can communicate them with a little um, with different styles or different protocols, and then once we've established the electronic interface into the machine then it's, uh, it's pretty easy from there. What's a typical That's ROS? What's a typical ROS hardware brain? Is that like a Raspberry Pi? So some people are driving cars with this uh, cell phone. And then, so it has a camera already built in, it has communications already built in. You just run Linux on it, and then you can interface it even through like CAN bus, if there's CAN bus on your vehicle. Um, some inexpensive methods are, like you're saying, uh, through microcontrollers. You can talk to it, and then you can have multiple microcontrollers on a vehicle, and then maybe one brain that is doing the vision processor navigation and controls. Yes, you can run it on a Raspberry Pi. I don't know if we will um, be taxing the processor too much, but uh, it'd be fun to try. So we huh. can try different levels. What do you think as... Um the easiest to implement if we're entry level into this at this point? Um, the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi. I think I would just go with the normal setup. So, for example, mm -hmm. um, if you had RC controls into your machine, then there's a, already a lot of autopilots already on the market for controlling rovers. So, that's an easy interface to connect to. So, so so you're saying if we have an RC controller, say an Arduino RC controller, then we can add a layer on top of that? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that's the way we want to go. We've got one guy working on a remote control for the tractor, James Wise, and I want to see where, I'd like to see where he's at on that. But the RC control part, that's the easy part, right? I mean, that's, that's nothing. That's the hard part. I mean, that's the hard part. The... Is it? Yeah, because once you can get it under computer control, then um, there's already autopilots out there. So you can look at the Pixhawk. The Pixhawk could just, we could just, there's software already done uh, for it. We could literally download the software and start driving your vehicle. Um, um, 
can we do so if we've got a remote controller so the remote controller means that I'm holding a device which has just got a battery and an RF transmitter and you're you're driving your tractor remotely it would have uh, in that configuration do you need a Arduino like say it's Arduino based do you need an Arduino on the sender side and on the receiving side or how does it work you can use either it just there's multiple ways to solve the problem for the communication so but um, just like a, imagine just an RC car yeah you have an RC car and you have a, a radio and you can drive it around yeah so say we have that how do you put a Pixhawk on top of that well they've already been doing it for a number of years there's a large community so um, basically just that zero to five control on the RC module and they interfaces directly to it huh so we could practice with a little RC car and drive it around and make sure everything's okay and take the same brain out of that and put it on your tractor and drive it around now the your tractor looks like it's a skid steer model and the, the other ones control just a regular car but they have skid steer version also they have a skid Stop. steer version already too mm -hmm. nice all it is is activating two solenoids so you have a DC signal you can go to a relay to get it's only 5 amps at 12 volts and that turns on the solenoid that then turns on the hydraulics so very simple good okay Sounds better how do you get yeah how do you get from the pixhawk what is the connection from pixhawk to remote controller 5 volt signal through what through USB um, so it, it would have to be the same protocol as the RC, the 0 to 5 volts and whatever amps it is. Is it like 40 milliamps or whatever on that? I'm not sure exactly what it is, but what is it the, um, the control is. Uh, how you many wires? Um, they have like black, white, and red. But um, you can do whatever. There's, there's a lot of ways to interface to it. So you can just do serial. I mean, so it just depends on the controller you use to control the hydraulics. You already have electronic hydraulics on there? Yeah. We have electronic hydraulics on a brick press. So all okay. it is is uh, you're activating hydraulic solenoids with an Arduino. That's all. So adding a RC yeah. layer on top of that is easy. So I think this is going to be a piece of cake. Man. <laughs> no, we'll see. So, the, the, um, so you can put like a Raspberry Pi on as the brain and then the Raspberry Pi can talk to your Arduino boards you raw serial so it's just a serial connection to it serial meaning USB yep just a regular USB plug that plugs into the Arduino yep lovely yeah you can pull off the wires directly and talk to it that way but um, there's there's a lot of different ways to do that I'm not a total expert on it I'm looking uh, to get some help around some different hardware setups but there's there's a lot of different ways to do it for low cost What's your background? Biology. Is that what you work in? You what? What are you working right now? Um, I work in robotics, so self-driving tractors. What company so is I that? Did field trials, uh, autonomous solutions. Oh really? Um, yeah. Are they using open source? No. What's your relationship to open source? Is there any conflict of interest there, or this is all good? No. They're, they're, they do research and uh, develop engineering services. They have a great program. Aha! Uh -huh. Wow. So, so you're all over the automation aspects. I mean, what sp more specifically, what kind of what kind of work do you do with them? I did uh, field trials. I was a project manager, product owner over orchard and vineyards. So I did small tractors, 95 to 115 horsepower, and then skid steers. So using basically their their equipment, you're interfacing with their hydraulic system. Exactly. Oh wow! Now, were you the technical guy doing this, or this is you're on the project management side? Yeah, project management side. And as you learned enough about this, then you got into some of this other open source that you're actually getting on a technical side. Yeah. Then I started just building small models with RC cars, and that's kind of how I practiced and learned, you know, how all that works. Mm-hmm. When you so have an RC. Principles. 
uh, when you have an RC car, like how would um, so you're you're sending a signal that turns a servo on? That's what happens there. So if you replace that servo with a solenoid, it should work the same. That's like not a big deal. Or you just change how you talk to it. So mm -hmm. whatever protocol the hydraulic system is using. Wow. Okay. Um, For example, some of them just talk CAN, so you can just send CAN uh, messages. CAN bus. Uh, what's that? I'm not familiar with that. What's CAM? Uh, CAN bus. CAN bus is, I mean, what kind of connection is that? Like, I, I understand Arduino. How do you connect to, to an Arduino with CAM? Do you, can you do that? Uh, yeah, there's a backpack that sits on top of the board. Oh, a, a shield, so to say? Exactly, a shield. That's what it's called. So you got a cam shield that uses one of the pen's inputs to do that communication. Yes, you can look at the open source uh, car control, OSCC.io, and they have um, a hardware package that will interface to a Kia Soul, and then you can automate it. And that's what they use. They have a, a shield that goes on top of the board as a signals. Well, this is good. So let's let's put uh, RC start on. Do you do Google Docs? I do. Okay. Let and me then, do you use Slack at all? Or is we that have, we have used it? We we lapsed it. I mean, not not really. We okay. um, in the absence of project managers, all those kinds of things go by the wayside. <laughs> um, but. Since you're a project manager, maybe you should use Slack. <laughs> you could try to hang around. Um, I created a little Slack channel, and then I thought maybe trying to get some guys talking about some approaches to that, because it would be good to make a simulation inside of Gazebo, and then you can practice different things with your robot. Okay, this is really good. So let's let's start this document. Let me share this with you. Um, Wait, let's see, maybe we want to go into the open source computer vision thing, which we started, and um, this, okay, this would build upon that. So, let me, let me share that one. Hmm, that's great. What's the, the communication, main communication channel for Ross? Is there, is that a forum or Facebook or a Facebook group or, do you have a Facebook group? Uh, discourse, discourse.ross.org. Okay. Please click on that. That's the open source robotic tractor document OSCC project open source hardware and software autonomous oh man this is great so, open source so car I control that's what it stands for uh, yeah. is this we started that meet up down in Austin Texas and so they're working on a Kia right now nice what's uh, are they talking about doing an autonomous car basically like the Google version Sure. I love uh, it. Oh, this is great. Lofty. This means that Google is not going to take over the world with autonomous cars? They're very, very good. They're extremely good. They're the leaders in amazing technology. But yeah. the goal is there's a lot of projects to open source the self-driving car. OSCC oh, this is great. I love this. Huh. We can... Uh, <laughs> develop the rural network of autonomous cars since we're in the backwoods okay uh, the, yeah. do do the um, autonomous cars apply equally well for rural areas probably even more so no oh. it's harder it's less harder lines yeah roads are less maintained and then there's less lines on the road and oh I see mutual indicators more animals you know like deer and moose and I see Okay. 
Uh, did you get into that document? I didn't. Uh, let me see the one. Click on the link which you see the chat box. Okay, I see you in there. This is what we did initially. I don't have to get into that, but we were talking about the micro track here and following lines that are basically not lines but stakes on the ground uh, using computer vision. But now I think this is um, we can return to this. That's just some design points here. We we're going to look at putting in stakes into the ground, like little PVC stakes every 15 feet, and try to follow them but let's yep. let's start on what we can do here so ROS so let's call it the ROS tractor um, and robotic operating system robot robot operating system it's basically a software project yes um, and how does hardware relate to ROS they there's people in there they're developing hardware in that project or I mean, naturally there are some there is an HROS group that is trying to um, make hardware pieces that are ROS compatible, so they're like plug and play. Mm -hmm. And the idea of ROS is that it makes it easy to to do, like you know, like for example, if you're starting from scratch, you'd probably look at Raspberry Pis, Arduinos. Um, yeah. So ROS basically has a bunch of libraries that enable you to work effectively with this. Can you can you describe what Ross has to offer? Offer. Um, yeah, it's, Ross has uh, pre-made packages and drivers for hardware. Mm -hmm. So it makes it easy to come up to speed and to get to get projects working. Mm -hmm. Okay. And how does it help us like drivers, like drivers for things like the Raspberry Pi? Oh, sure. Yeah. But then also sensors. So if you want to connect a laser or a camera, you're going to need a camera driver. And mm -hmm. then so they, somebody's already written the camera driver, so you can just use that. And then there's an image pipeline that will mm -hmm. segment your image or do, do whatever you want with it. So, for example, a camera driver. So assuming there's a certain proprietary camera we, we need to communicate to it? Then you'd have to maybe write your own, your own driver. So we have open source cameras? Okay. Sorry, sorry. I mean, I'm asking, is is Ross typically assuming you're using some kind of an open source camera system, or? No, no. Mm -hmm. no. No. What kind of cameras do you typically use? That's a great question. Um, I don't have a lot of experience in the vision system, so the only camera I've used is the camera on my cell phone. Yeah, let's not let's not get into the computer vision part because I think our question is a little simpler, and that is to get pretty good precision. And how can we get precision? Is it, can that be achieved by GPS, or do we have to have some some beacons of some sort? How do we do that? Yeah. So you know the the accuracy versus price graph. Hmm. So uh, how does it look? I like work. How does it look? Uh, the more accurate that you want, the more it costs, and it's mm -hmm. exponential. So if yeah. you need sub millimeter accuracy then it's very expensive because the sensors and controls are very expensive but mm -hmm. if you need uh, sub meter accuracy mm -hmm. then um, a lot less expensive okay uh, what's a way to implement sub meter accuracy 12 inches what kind of um, sensor do you need a, at that point GPS um, would GPS do it yeah you can get a GPS to do it. how much how much for a GPS module like that? Uh, so they have uh, 10 centimeter accuracy GPS for um, $1,000. So mm -hmm. that's out of Swift Nav. And they did release a new version of their GPS. Um, I, haven't, I haven't looked at it yet, but you can see those. And that, that will give you uh, decimeter accuracy. You still have to control to it, so there's other error. OK. Um, for 1K, what's the common, the mundane GPS units that you can get for cheap? Like, what are what are Spectron. they? 
Um, it could be like nine meters, but um, it just depends. You can get some okay ones for like a hundred bucks, hundred and a half. You get some DGPS that are pretty good. DGPS. That's called DGPS. Is the I guess the term I think. Is that about nine meter, or is that better? Three meter. Or uh, nine feet. Three meter, you sub can, meter. You may be able to get sub meter. Pass to pass, you'll get. So there's a couple different terms, but you can you can do okay. You can drive around. And I think if you use the vision system, that will also help. There's a lot of factors. In, yeah. In, in it. Um. The DGPS three meter is one hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Garmin makes a serial one. Are there any open source GPS sensors? Well, Pixhawk is kind of that. Uh, not Pixhawk, sorry, the SwiftNav. SwiftNav is an open source project, so you, the hardware is open source. There's a few, um, I think on the FPGA, they're not releasing that software, so on some of it's not. SwiftNav has open source DGPS? Yeah. Uh huh. And they're, they've got the actual schematics online for the actual yeah. boards. Does does anyone build them, them themselves? I don't know. That's a good question. Um, there are probably a lot other. There's probably a few other companies also now. So this information's a little old. Uh huh. So I, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't surprise me if there's uh, open source submeter competitors. Hmm. Because something like on the order of, uh, you know, like for the initial one to keep everything, if it's the first prototype, say we want to do a a chicken tractor across an acre field, you know, we can, we've got a field that's 50 feet by, say, 300 feet. Mm -hmm. um, so let's take that use case, 50 by 300 feet field. Um, yeah, let's take that as a use case. Let's, let's design for that, that we can do, uh, I think as a, it would be nice to show that we can do a chicken tractor with chickens in there. That's, we may be using the tractor to pull, pull around like a hundred chickens, um, in a, in a chicken tractor, which might be like one or a few boxes of, of, of chickens. How does that sound for a use case? Um, once you get a driving you can pull anything. Yeah, yeah. Um, would that be a good thing to go for? Yeah, I think it'll be fun. I like, I like chicken tractors. Let's do it. Chicken tractor. And we're gonna, the experiment is gonna be, because this tractor has 7,000 pounds of pull force. Well, do you already have the chicken tractors and everything out there? You just no. want them pulled around autonomously? No, we don't have them. No, you don't have them. No. Okay. We can design them to, to fit, so. Uh, but I was thinking, like, there's a limit to, I mean, it's going to be easy to do a train, a chicken train. It's yeah. harder to do a bigger box. So I was thinking a chicken train with enough room to turn around on 50 feet, that's kind of tight. You can't do the, the train can't be too long. Yeah, so I've seen a video where they have, a, like, a little tractor that's solar powered, and they're pulling chicken tractors across this meadow, and it's, uh, they have a straight, straight bar coming off of the back. There's a long straight bar coming uh, sideways, the rope pulling the bar with the three chicken tractors, so they're parallel coming coming down the field. Uh-huh. Okay. Just Is around. that, are they G GPS? Nothing, it just goes straight. It looks like it just goes straight. It's a big field. I mean, they just let it go, and it's real slow. So they must go catch it at night or something, or bring it around. Okay, because it would be nice to show that that's actually functional and for real. I was thinking a watering station that you would dock to a like you know like the trains with the overhead watering thing the steam trains you dock to a watering thing we can set that up and then it would yeah you like that that's that's awesome yeah let's do it um so that um, that way you can i mean i'm talking about real practical use case this is not like fooling yep. around this is we're going to actually produce chickens and have them free range by and do you follow the idea that you put one solar panel of 300 watts on it to drive it for six hours during the day? 
that's what we would like to do. So one of our guys is doing that. We're doing a small electric power cube, which yep. produces a tractor that moves three feet per minute. That's nice. That's a good speed. So that's that's what we'd like to design for. This is this is cool. This is really good. Um, are you so you're working on agricultural applications of robotic things? Uh, are you do you do any farming on the side? No, no gardening, but no farming. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, are we going to borrow from OSCC.io for this, or that's that's a little different technology? A little different technology. Okay. Um, so chicken tractor application. Um, yeah. So I'm just specifying some of the stuff. So it would be an Arduino remote controller. Okay. Uh, what else? With 3D printed case. Of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Well, I got inspired about 3D printed cases because we were making a filament maker the other day, and, and you can make you can 3D print big cases too if you glue them together. We glue it with just crazy glue, so that was good. Okay, um, ten centimeter accuracy for 1K. No, we don't do that. That's that's too much money for now. Um, so there's lots of different ways to steer it if we're open to being creative. Okay, so, so tell me more. So pick that around. Uh, so tell me more. What what else? Well, there's, it just depends on on where it is and what we're doing. Just like you said with the poles, um, mm -hmm. if it's a known environment like this pin, then and you can change the infrastructure, then you have different choices. You don't need to know your global position because I'm just going up and down this field. So you can use different things. Cameras huh? are cheaper. Is that a cheaper sensor? What what kind of sensor do you use when you don't use GPS? can use different technology like radars, um, lasers, and cameras. Those are kind of the three four technologies. Now, in terms of implementation, it sounds like the GPS route would be a little easier, no? Um, no? Well, it could be. It just depends. It would be fun to play around. Because with the GPS, you're just reading something that's coming from the environment, whereas here you have to set up pointing systems, a little bit more mechanical. I'm just seeing, for example, you have to point the laser or or is it just you just mount it? That's it. Well, lasers are a really expensive technology to use. So the, the lowest cost is cameras, but if you can um, interact with your environment, putting up little fiducials, putting up... Um, if the camera is having a hard time reading the environment or distinguishing the environment, we can cheat just by putting the posters of, you know, blocks of different colors. It makes it easier for the camera to see and know where it is. Can it recognize? For, some, can it recognize yeah. one-inch PVC fence posts? No, I mean maybe, but uh, cameras has a big field of view and long, uh -huh. so. What would let, let's see in terms of implementation? So we have 50 by 300 feet. What would it look like? So, so how many of these? How often? How large? I'm not sure. Somebody in the community would know, or if they probably have already tried it. Tell us the results of localization. That's what I'm saying. Because of all this added infrastructure, it seems for that reason, it seems like GPS might be the easiest way to go at this point, or no? Could be. It just depends on um, what the environment looks like. Yeah, because um, let's see. The we always talk about scalability. So, can such a solution, the GPS solution, can definitely scale to any area. In fact, it's positively scalable, meaning it's easier to operate at larger scale for the field size. Um, right. Yep. These yeah, beacons. To go to a larger field. Yeah, I'm thinking like with weather, you know, weather and having to maintain these. Uh, I'm just thinking on the feet. What would be easier? 
Is GPS acceptable for this? The 50 foot width? Definitely. Absolutely. I, I would say let's just rock forward with that for now. Yep. Because we've got limited yeah, time. Already, yeah, and we already have controllers that are used to that data and can yeah. use it. So. Yeah, it's like because because then the, the other stuff might be a little bit more custom. Yeah, I think this let's let's go with uh, yeah. let's write that down. Got a GPS based system. Okay. Um. Skid steer drive on a tractor. Do what? Skid steer drive, so track drive on tractor. Okay. Uh, that that's what we'll do. And uh, what other information do we need to get started? Um, if you already have those hydraulics, those electric hydraulic valves yeah. kicked out, uh, we'll just be uh, getting getting those model numbers so we can take a look at the specs on those. So we're not going to control like the the only thing it drive does right now is drive. It's a cube and then two two wheels. So that's it. We're just driving this. Yeah, we're gonna have a loader on it, but we can just use the drive, just the drive. I mean, I think that's plenty for now. Um, okay. Yeah. So the only thing we need is the model num number of those um, hydraulics, and then I think um, with that we should be good. Yeah. Uh, so let me paste in this hydraulic. Uh, can you take a look at that one? I'm pasting in hundred dollars. And then you have, do you have the three D models of the micro tractor? Yep. Might be fun to make a simulation. Oh yeah. And see how that goes. Uh, do you guys speak FreeCAD? Um, I don't. I don't. I'm not a. I don't know how that works, but um, if, if it's something that can be converted, yes. It's colloidal or colloida files. Colada. What? Colada. What's a standard? Industry standard is step files. Step for the file. kind of step colada's standard. Colada is open source. Yeah. So. Let's see. Um, so in the part library, there's the master. So let me send you to this page here. So there's the. I'll send you direct to the. And what's the. Um, what's the shape of the field? I mean, is it hilly or. It's relatively flat. It's it's on slide two. Um, slide two shows hundred meter by twenty meter. It's kind of like that. It's slightly inclined. It might be uh, the slope on it may be six feet higher on the west than the east, okay. and it slopes down very gently, maybe six feet over the three hundred feet. It's relatively flat for practical purposes, but yeah, there is that six foot rise across from one side. Six at most, it's between three and six. So are these, this is just on off, not proportional control. Yeah. Well, not when it's moving so slowly, right? Okay. Crawling along. It's like a half this, mile an hour or something. Yeah, yeah. 
I mean three feet per per minute. So it's a hundred eighty feet per hour. So like a tenth mile per hour. How many feet in a three thousand? How many feet in a? It's like three thousand. Five thousand. Five thousand two hundred and eighty. So this is like one thirtieth of a mile per hour. It's very slow. It it runs a thousand feet, I think, in a day. So it goes back and forth a couple of times a day, a few times. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's great. I think um, I guess my my to do list is to uh, chase down the controller interface and then the three D model. Try to get that working. And clearly, you will benefit from the free CAD crash course on the first day of the workshop. That's right. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Uh, FreeCAD is pretty good. It's buggy, but it's getting better and better. We're developing it in some ways, yep. Mm -hmm. What do you think of on shape? Well, it's not open source. Okay. On shape, let's see, what's, is that cloud? Yeah, it's a cloud, kind of like a 3D model. Yeah, there's that but plus Fusion 3... 360 but the idea there is we're developing whole tool chains within FreeCAD that interoperate with Blender and other things and CAE so um, no we're we're into the open source solution uh, for various reasons modifiability as well as durability over time so yeah we're just open source, so we don't we don't use any of that stuff. Sorry. No, that works. Yeah. Um, we can interchange between step files if you if someone's doing on shape or whatever. We can do step files. Now, what else? Um, how do we reach out to some of these other people that are interested in um, in this application? Yeah. Um, gonna pull stuff on the discussion forum and start a, a sub project maybe if there's enough people that are interested so right now I've asked a few of the developers that I know out of Boston and Missouri and one of the guys is uh, committed to come and looking at a couple other ones so and then uh, so that's just basically where it is now okay um, excellent so Let's see, did you fill out the response form on the for the workshop? Did I send you that? Oh, I haven't sent you that. So I have a I need to send you that a register response so you can provide some logistics information. Uh-huh, I'll do that. And um, the forum is you said that's a it's a, is it a forum or what is it? You said uh, sorry, can you put a link into the document for where that discussion takes place? Okay, I meant into the dock. Okay, so discussion oh, thread. Yeah. Okay, I got it, I think. Okay. All right. What else do we want to cover? And so, anything else? Um, I think if there's somebody, once we get a few people interested, it might be nice to 
get the software developers in a meeting or if they want to meet again to kind of discuss some options. I don't know, on, on your side, who's who's doing some work on that already? Do you have a guy doing vision or? Yeah, so there was a guy who was helping us on the vision part. We can enlist him again. His name is Salam. He's from uh, Beirut. Okay. Uh, that's one person on our team. We can pull him back in. Uh, who was working on the stuff that you see on the latter pages here. And uh, so we would have just a simple, just a really quick system design. So we've got an Arduino, uh, which is connecting to solenoids, um, which are connecting to. Two hydraulic wheel motors. Track motors. And before the Arduino uh, is the... So the Arduino would have a shield on it with RC shield. Is that what happens? And then... Yeah, it could, or we could just talk directly to the Arduino. Some of the software guys may have better suggestion. So, so one way is, um, so one way is the RC controller that's by the waves, by the airwaves. Like that, and or we can do just one that's located right on the Arduino too, or is it going to be mounted on a tractor? Because the RC controller that that could be off the tractor. That's we just steer it. So, where would the? Are we talking so about something like Pixhawk here, or or a Raspberry Pi? You could put a Raspberry Pi there, talking to the Arduino. Okay, let's do Raspberry Pi since that's simpler right now. Uh, so. So the Raspberry Pi would be talking to the Arduino. Can we do it just with Arduino if you're doing GPS? Or that's not powerful enough? Yeah, probably not powerful enough. Okay. So then the... Do we want to have the... Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of lost here. So the RC controller wouldn't be talking to the Raspberry Pi, it would be talking to, talking to the Arduino just for remote control, or otherwise the Raspberry... So this system allows you either remote control or Raspberry Pi GPS? Again, these are all just choices. All of these things are possible. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the best layout is, but yes, you do want manual control over the vehicle so you can drive it around and then autonomous control. Yeah. Um, what what would you say would be the best way to, um, I mean, RC controller, yes, I can understand that, it would talk to the Arduino somehow, because I want to just kind of scope it, because we, we don't have a lot of time, we should kind of minimize the discussion if we know a ready route of implementation, like Arduinos are acceptable, because we use, like for us, we, we use a finite amount of components in the Global Village construction set altogether. So, okay. uh, such that it's manageable like on a community scale it's basically like a minimum construction set but we do use raspberry pis and arduinos so and, and solenoids and metal and hydraulic motors so that's all within the set can we execute with raspberry pi arduino like like this here so so gps module on top of raspberry pi So something that would work like this. Um, uh, and did you say we have open source, like we should go for the open source D, uh, GPS? Yeah. Definitely we want to try to do, can we stick to open source on that? We can try. We can try to see what's out there. Okay. Let's do that. That'll be, that'll be good because we don't want to... Yeah, we want to be all open source. Yep. That sounds good. 
So let's let's kind of tr try to figure this out. Open source GPS, Raspberry Pi, Arduino with solenoids driving the motors, RC controller that can talk directly to the Arduino. Would it be talking directly to the Arduino or, or to the through the Raspberry Pi? We should probably set it up so it's talking directly without the Raspberry Pi. So the Raspberry Pi, we would basically, once we turn that on, the RC controller, we just shut that off and we can turn on the Raspberry Pi, but both Are we using the Arduino because we have an RC controller? Do we need the Arduino? We don't really, do we? Yeah, I don't I don't think so. You're controlling two solenoids. There's plenty of outputs on the Raspberry Pi. Right. The only thing is uh, this concerns parallel development and also the simplicity. Like, the way reason why we want to do the Arduino with RC controller is that we don't have if we just have remote control application we don't want to involve the raspberry pi um, right and besides it allows for a parallel development path where a person is developing the rc controller with arduino independently so we can say that is one parallel development path by some developer which is independent totally of the raspberry pi and then we can say when we invoke the raspberry pi we are just overriding just just making that connecting that to the arduino and we can even use the same pins uh do we, are there going to be pin conflicts for the arduino do we have to dedicate certain know. pins okay okay but let's let's question. assume let's assume that there's going to be independent development paths between the rc control route because that's underway already so we don't want to bottleneck that process with getting the raspberry pi up yeah. So they are already working on the Arduino and the RC. Are they working on that pathway already? Yeah. Or are you just talking about parallel development? They're like, working so on the pathway are... already. Okay. I, have, I don't know the status of that because it's not logged on the wiki, but I'll check in. Okay. I, I, I like that idea. Um, there are some maybe some extra costs to add the Raspberry Pi, but if you don't need it, it'd be nice not to have it. Well, right, but we'll we'll develop a system here where we are using that for the GPS, right? Um, so in this instance, we do Raspberry Pi with GPS in parallel with the plain Arduino module, and we're using one Arduino, so we're not gonna do like two Arduinos for this because we can just connect to that same one. Yeah. Most likely, I, I don't know the details, we probably can, so let's do this. So this is our, our uh, current system diagram. Okay. Let's work from that, see if we run into any snags with that, and let's keep evolving that, developing this. Feel free to share this doc, the first page of that, with the okay. forum the there. And, the yeah. Whatever, don't don't confuse people with the last four pages which were on the plain computer vision route, so we're not really getting there at this point unless there's enough interest that somebody wants to ride on top of that. But if we do go with computer vision, we would have to design that as a parallel process so that it's not interfering with the, this, this implementation of GPS, which I think is going to be... It seems that the GPS route for autonomous activity is going to be the quickest out of anything. Yeah. Like as opposed to computer vision. I mean, GPS is going to be simpler, right? Of course, right? Yeah. Yeah. That already is working out there. Yeah. Does anyone have a computer vision tractor out there that you know of? No. Okay. Yeah. That might be a... We can definitely invite people to for further development on that. For now, we should focus on on this for the instance of, of October 25, 26, rather. It's coming up quick. It's yeah. coming up. It's We don't have time to do that right now, but we can definitely get people started on just... I mean, we'll, we'll, deck, we'll dent that after the workshop, but for now, I think we're out of time for that more ambitious development. Do you have any guys down in Austin that have been to... Up there or participating 
I have a guy down in Austin that wants to do it, but I don't think he can get away and make the workshop. But he was wondering about building one down there. In parallel to that day? No. Um, that would be best, but too short now. Maybe next next build. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if they're not set up for the mechanical build, I mean, they're not going to be able to do that. Because that's going to be pretty extreme yeah. to get that built in that short time. Yeah. Next time. Next time. We'll get them. We we'll get them to the first replication workshop once we get this perfected. Well, I mean, by all means, I mean this is a constant evolution process. So we do the first prototype here. If it works, we can talk about running a workshop relatively quickly after that. Like, if you want, like a month after that or two months or something. I'd love to see that happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And by that time, we can actually. Yeah, that's that's right. So, this is great. Let's continue. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. This looks quite I exciting. Enough to get going. Okay. And then I'll start to uh, post up on the discourse page about the workshop and invite some developers and then uh, work on the model and uh, see what we can do. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, this is going to be good. Uh, would you mind logging on a wiki page called Matt Log? which will carry this because uh, we every one of us has logs on the wiki so can i set you up to this one right here the first line there so please put all your progress there so it's easy to find that way we i never have to ask you for your assets i know where to find it i like it in fact we're going to embed so you know how to embed google docs um no so Look at my, let me share my screen with you just to show you that. Okay. So, in the wiki? Right. So, can you see my screen now? So, if you see that, we're working on this computer vision document. I go into file, publish to the web, embed. I like small size, okay. and then copy the embed code, and then you go to mat log on the wiki create and then you just paste the html but you have to paste it around html tags so html tags and then the embed code does that make sense yep. and now you have um mat log with this working document uh so it's right there and typically we just do the date so dated last entry up on top so for example so it'll be Tuesday October 3 2017 there and we like to put in links uh, to for example open source robotic tractor that that's actually the same document oh wait Yeah, the open source robotic tractor page doesn't have much in there except for the initial discussion on what we were talking about for the, there's a video there regarding the discussion on the computer vision tractor. So, okay. but that's, that's related. But yeah, yeah, there you go. So there's your log. And uh, this will be fun. All right. As soon as you do, do, do you also post any of this on social media? Because if you do, uh, please include me or such. Um, uh, is there like any Facebook that they use or anything, or any Twitters or? Uh, Twitter. Yep. Okay. Uh, can you put that up in the main document there? Okay. So Twitter. You see, um, within the working doc, Twitter. Oh, um, do you only? I need, uh, oh, 
I guess I was logged into a different person. Uh, so on the, yeah, are you in there in the working doc? So if you can paste the Twitter link, which is the second bullet point. Oh yeah, you you jumped in there again. Okay. says that um, I only have you only. Oh, do you? Really? It should be open here. Oh, yeah. Oh, oops. You're right. Can edit. Anyone can edit. Save. Public on the web. Done. Okay, yeah. Can you pump that in there now? You should, might have to refresh. You're in, uh, are you in California or Austin? Where are you? I'm in Portland, outside of Portland right oh. now. Okay. I see. All right, well, excellent, excellent. Good enough? I like it. I like it. Yep. If you like it, I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, this is this is awesome. I think this is going to be one of those... Uh, it's definitely implementable. There's that knowledge out there that we can definitely use. So this could be rapid development if we can pull it off. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so let's keep in touch. What's our next touch point? definitely think um, maybe understanding how all those guys are connecting the hydraulics, the electrical part. Maybe a meeting in a week, we can get some work done and get some people together and then uh, maybe have another hangout. Or... Yeah, let's do this same time next week, yeah? Okay, I like that. I like Pretty that. Cadence. That's good. I'm going to send you an invite like right now. And invite those other people, anyone you can round up. Yes. Just round them up into that meeting, uh, Jitsi <laughs> meeting, which is open source, open source hangouts, and nice. uh, that'll be great. We'll keep going, and yeah, see if how many more of those people that are the actual subject matter experts can we get to the actual workshop so that we guarantee that that thing is going to get done. Yeah. yeah, I think it'd be fun to kind of have like um, either a camera on site while we're developing or have um, online meetings during the workshop while we're working on the project, maybe to get outside people that can't make it, but they can okay. participate. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, We have internet in a Hab Lab there, the building we can, where we can do some of the work. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Um, are those micro houses? Do you rent those out, or do you people stay at hotels? You camp on site. We've got um, what we have that's available right now is is the it's the Hab Lab. It's our it's got like twelve enough space for twelve people, but that is just multi. It's got it's a dorm dorm thing with a couple of people per room, a few people per room. So if you're comfortable with that, you can do that. If you're not, you can get a hotel. Do you still have the log uh, earth home with the sod roof? Still there. It's, uh, nice. I guess, if we re renovate that, yeah, like uh, I just walked in there, there's a dead opossum in there. No, no, it's the thing is run down, so, but I think we definitely are going to want to re renovate that at some time as a historical marker. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. 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 Okay, that's awesome. Um, have you have you seen the project for a long time, or have you been following us? Or um, I I was out there about six years ago. I worked for like three days out there. Really? A long time ago. Yeah, I think it was six years ago. I was gonna try to pull up the pictures. No way! But, Send that. Uh, you mean I met you already, and I didn't recognize that. Yeah, 
I was out there, it was kind of a short trip. It was just a long weekend. So I took like, uh, I was only out there like three days or something. Wait, how come? a long time ago. Oh, we, we were making the compressed earth bricks machine out in the old shop. The new shop hadn't started yet, but I think you had some lumber piles. Or the no kidding, that's, oh man. How come I don't remember you? I don't have any... Let's see. I'll, I'll send you a picture. I probably look different. I have gray hair now and less of it. So you were, we were building a brick press during the summer of 2011? Okay. No, that, I mean, is that, is that be, so? I don't know if it was 11. Was yeah, it? Uh, wait, was it, it when there were like 10 people there? Yeah, there was, uh, yeah, there was a kid. Uh, sleeping in a hammock out in the, the round where the old lathe was. He was working on a lathe. Oh, man. That is funny. I, I Yeah, okay. Well, I, I didn't recognize the name, and it's I don't see it in my emails because I, I switched emails, I think, 2012 or so. Wow. <laughs> okay, well, so, so you, you know all this. Uh, okay, I didn't... I didn't uh, totally didn't connect. Good to see you again, then. <laughs> Welcome back. Yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay wow no i you must have changed because i i totally don't recognize you at all i mean i remember a bunch of those guys i totally how long were you there for just three days yeah it was real short oh, okay yeah, okay so it was very short yeah okay yeah but that's good it's changed a little bit since then but otherwise it's we haven't scaled to the to the trillion dollar level yet but uh that's still coming so I'm sorry about that, but we're working on it. And with this help, no we're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> What's been the best profit model so far? Well, so far, the only thing we have going on a regular basis are 3D printer workshops. And we've done a bunch of uh, CB press builds. Uh, the largest revenue we ever got was from the, the Eco Home workshop where... Um, that model works, but the idea is that it's sporadic. We can't do it regularly. So we started, the first thing that we started that's regular for regular revenue is, is the 3D printer builds, which we're trying to run just about every month. And we're trying to get a, a stable revenue model from that, that we can actually get other people to do that in a re really replicable way. So we're working on that. But I mean, the amazing thing, just to reminisce about some of these things, it's it has not happened where people just come in, get together for a little bit of time, and then come out with a product. It's like everyone quits. The the work doesn't get done to the finish line. So we've got the last mile problem on just about everything. And we're just really nailing... I think we're at the cusp of nailing the 3D printer, CB press, PowerCube. PowerCube is like ready for, ready for action, totally. Um, and tractor. this tractor build will be like where it's starting to get really good like very attractive to customers too but that's been a struggle to to get the get the products as real viable products and yep. um when i look back in retrospect it's amazing how i think it's the i was talking about this to someone else today about the cultural literacy the collaborative literacy that says okay let's bunch together until we get a product let's not defect yet but what's happened throughout the whole project is people come in and then they defect. And we never got to the finished product. So on that exit interview, what what what's the reason? They just have to get real jobs or a lot of people it's financial pressure. Some it's like they don't see enough of the vision, so they just go off on their own project thinking that see, because we're committed to a very certain way of doing things because it's a set and they say oh well it's easier to do it this way and they just go off on their separate fork instead of saying okay we're gonna still keep together because we are still gonna get a good product they're thinking I'm just gonna defect because it's gonna be easier so a lot of times it might be that something some other pathway might be easier and they just take that on like because we, we have a lot of the things that you have to use common parts modularity scalability uh we're limiting we're we're very actively limiting the number of parts we can use while still retaining the industrial performance um still being able to bootstrap towards a full civilization but uh, but most people it's hard for them to see it what's the main reason i guess if i could summarize 
I mean, it's between financial pressure and grit. Grit, certainly. For those that didn't have financial pressure, it's grit. People just give up, you know. It's too long, too much work to develop something from scratch. I think that's primarily the reason. Just, that's the thing. Yeah. It takes longer to get to the goal. It's too, too the goal's too far out there. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, because, uh, I mean, we're definitely running into some of the, you know, like when I had the brick press back in 20, the second prototype, the automated version, I thought, wow, like once we get it, I was, at that point, I went through my open source kind of uh, rites of passage, <laughs> the open source rites of passage when I thought, okay, now we've got this brick press. Let's see, can we open source this or, or can we not? Because this is so good and it's going to just spread all over the place. So at that point, I had the rites of passage saying, no, we're absolutely committed to open source. But I thought that back in, this was probably like, 2010, 2009, where I went through those rites of passage where I thought it was finished, it's done, now everyone's going to copy it. And it didn't happen. Tw there's 12 replications around the world right now, uh, as far as the CEB press goes, but far from viral. So the point is that that last mile, I think it's the last mile problem where if we develop it to the enough of a finely refined state, then it's going to spread more, like like everything, documentation, build process everything like so we're finding out that to get that hundred percent is a lot of work it's more than anyone wants to wants to spend because part of that is documentation and that's you know just twice as much work as the design itself and stuff so it, i think it's the bottom line is just not easy i think that's that's the main thing otherwise everyone else would do, be doing it you know and i thought that the um, compressor earth brick home i think um, you're selling for like forty three hundred dollars or something, um, but people were interested in that product. Like they were willing to buy it. The brick press. Yeah. Yeah. There's some people. Or, or the home. Um, the brick press, but I, I didn't. I didn't make it out for the or the home. But right. The home got a lot of traction. Definitely, definitely got a lot of traction. I mean, the brick press. I mean, you can build it for that. You can build it probably between three and five thousand dollars. The competitors sell for like like fifty thousand for that level of a machine. But given that, wow. nobody went out there still to just take that and make a business out of it. I mean, that's the thing that just blows my mind, which says that. Um, I mean, people are sla we're slaves. We 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 are not entrepreneurial enough as a society, you know, because I still think. I mean, that business opportunity there is huge. But if you look at us too, we're not pursuing it actively because we're doing all these different projects. But I would say somebody out there that just you know just takes that, they just run with it, and make a good life out of out of sell, building and selling those. But nobody has. So that's that's the part that kind of blows my mind. It, it just shows that people are not as entrepreneurial or free to do different things as we would like. And definitely the entrepreneur types, they're going to go for the low hanging fruit. They're just, you know, get funded, get some, you know, get some funding, get investors, do some stuff that doesn't really change the world. And they go away with that happy because these things are more like on the regenerative, more like kind of mundane, boring stuff that we do. And I think that's why we don't attract maybe the pure entrepreneurs that just simply find an easier way to make entrepreneurship happen, you know. So yeah, it's it's a very interesting story, but I'm definitely surprised. Uh, I still remain surprised that nobody just took it and ran with it. Yeah. Yeah. Because that was ready for the taking, like since five years, you know, since twenty, since we got the first automated machine was which was like 2011. At that point, I mean, it's good enough. It's got enough of an integration and everything worked out that someone someone who wants to take it from you know, say the 90, 95% to 100, they they can, building upon all the work that we have. But also granted, it, it did take, it would take, like, I, I would say that to get to 90% is probably one-fifth the work it takes to go from 90 to 100. You know, it's actually much more, to do that. that's the last mile problem. That's probably why this hasn't uh, taken off. It's it's definitely the last mile problem. And, and, and we're doing everything, like if we're doing it open source, like, Everything matters, like from the open source CAD, you know, everything. That, and just, just now have we picked up open source CAD that we're really developing robust CAD capacity, you know. 
before it was like someone would do it and you know in AutoCAD and then drop off and we never see any of those files again because nobody can open them you know things like that that's why Yeah, Matt, to continue that thread, can you hear me? Um, yep, it just uh, it looked like you logged out and logged back in. Or yeah, I did. got disconnected and came back. Yeah, so the thing is, uh, I think the critical some of the critical elements to making this succeed is you have to have the whole package, and I was adamant on keeping it honest throughout, meaning, no, you're going to use open source software, you know we're gonna do all all of it right and that's why I think it took so many years to get to that place and I think we're getting there and it's 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 the next trillion dollar economy but I think there's enough um, enough difficulty in the process because we're trying to do the whole thing in an honest way all open source so we're adding these fundamental levels of uh, difficulty like you asked me about on shape well no we're gonna do FreeCAD because it's scalable to the world uh, yeah. and it's going to last and so forth. And it's going to have a bigger impact and we're seeing that we're seeing the fruits of that like with FreeCAD and other things of just really getting that process down right so that we can scale yeah thanks for coming back to it it'll be great I'm excited yeah I think it'll be fun yeah let's do it so I gotta go I'm actually going out to Utah tomorrow to uh, get them set up to the brick press that we sold to them because they're going to do a demo day over there so I'm going for three days, and but it'll be good to catch up again on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Okay, what city are you going to? Salt Lake City, University of Utah. They're they're okay. using the brick press at, a, at their project called Design Build Bluff, where they build build uh, basically low income housing for at Native American reservations there. So that's the application there. Design Build Bluff. It's called Design Build Bluff. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. So that's good. That's good. Okay. Well, glad to have you. I'm really glad we reconnected. This is exciting. So uh, we'll continue from here and see how many people we can round up to to our team. And it's one of those yes. things that I mean, I think the robotic tractor. I mean, what if that's the killer app? You know, this could be it. I mean, we <laughs> exactly. could be we could be at a killer app right here too. So let's see where it goes. Cause, yeah. yeah. Let's see. Let's see where it goes. So, okay. Well, Matt, thank you so much for the time, and we'll we'll continue. Yep, and log on your log. Okay. The, the thing is, make sure you log anything that you do on your log so we can follow what you're doing, and that when, whenever we invite any other people, we'll, in, we'll show them your log, show them this video. I'll post this video on your log as well, and, as well as on um, our YouTube. So, yeah, definitely please keep logging. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds great. Okay, great. Thank you, Matt. Take care then. Bye-bye.